Hello YouTube, RJ. Hey, at the end of the last video where we were building the uh, three tube regen radio kit, I figured something out. I was in here looking at the at the kit and trying to figure out how everything went together. And I thought about laying out on the board here. And what I figured out is something doesn't line up because I was like, okay, well, those must go through here. Well, no, they don't fit. Huh. Why would these holes be so far apart from my potentiometers here? I, I don't know. I went online and I found this picture um, here, which I'll pull up a digital one for you guys so you can see it better. So anyway, I pulled that up and took a look at it and realized that even though the circuit board is marked for these components, these components weren't supposed to go on this board. They're supposed to go on here and be wired onto that board. This is the problem you get when you have no instructions and you're flying blind. So I'm going to uh, take a moment and remove these parts back off, these two potentiometers and this switch. And so I'm going to do that off cam so that I don't make this video. I don't want this video to be two and a half hours long. So uh, I'll go ahead and do that and I'll come back and we'll kind of regroup and we'll go from there. So see you in just a few. Okay, and we're back. As you can see, things look a little different. I had to remove the pots and wire them. So now we can get them up on the panel. Uh, might notice something odd here. Well, Turns out, if you remember in the last video when I installed this switch, what's odd is one of the things I want to point out is this looks like it should go on the board because they have slotted slots for these lugs. Instead of, you know, circles for, for wires, they've got a shape for this to go on the board. So it makes you think it should go on the board. But anyway, problem is, if you remember the last video, when I put this in, I mentioned how it was very snug going in the board. Well. As you can probably imagine, with six six pins, six lugs going through the board and being snug, I had a heck of a time getting this out. I ended up having to use hot air, and I had to get it so hot to get these to come loose that I weren't the switch. This, this cheap switch is locked up now, so it's totally unusable. I didn't have a double pull, double throw switch. I just had single pulls. Short of shutting down the project and waiting for a week or whatever, I went and used them. So I have two. I have one for the 9 volt and one for the 1.5 volt. So you're just going to throw both of these switches to turn the power on. And so, you know, we'll, I'll live with that. You won't have to because you'll know better. So I traced this out. It turns out, if you look here, you've got one, one part of the switch switching here and one part of the switch switching here. And so that's what I've wired up. And that's what we've got. And that's what we're going to work with. Still got some concerns about the 9 volt. You know, everything I've seen says it needs more than that. I, I'm really thinking about putting another lug of these on in, se in series and add another 9 volt. That'll get me, oh, probably about 19 volts. Much closer to the 22.5, the schematic says. But I'm going to go ahead and try it this way. And then if I have any issues at all, I'm going to go ahead and do that. That won't be hard to do. You might notice a couple other additions. We put the transformers on. Now, this transformer here, marked T1 on the board right here, doesn't matter, there's no polarity, is not really being used as a transformer. It's the RFC, the radio frequency choke in the circuit. So I went ahead and cut these wires off shorter here. And I did, I ohmed out these transformers, and the 220 side is the red leads. And this was supposed to be hooked to the 220 side for the RFC, according to everything I could find. So when I looked at the, the second schematic, you'll see that it's marked 220 coming here. So I went ahead and did that. Over here, the board has markings that show 220 this side, six volt this side. So of course, 220 on that side, six volt on that side. This is your impedance transformer for your speaker. Now, I didn't see where they gave me a place to hook to the speaker. It all comes back off the 6 volt to this earphone plug. So I traced it out and I found that this center lug here, the center, center pad here, is one side. And these two corners are the other. So I went ahead and wired to that. You can see what I'm 
I'll bring her up a little. I had these transformers, but let's go ahead and get a little better. So anyway, what I did is I went ahead and wired up to that center pad there and to the corner pad here to the speaker. So the speaker is now wired up. We have that done. That puts us basically back where we were, plus the speaker and transformers, which, as you can see over here, you've got the T1, the reds hooked there. That's all there was to it. So that, that's, that's all I've done. So that's where we are. Uh, now, moving on, I've got, surprise, more questions. They show this mounted in the front plate, and that would mean this would need to get attached. And there are some screw holes under this. I'm going to pull it out. Well, there are some screw holes there, but I don't see any screws unless they're in here and I just can't see them. They didn't seem to give you enough. Let me tell you what else they didn't give you enough of. They don't give you enough wire. That little ribbon wire, when you strip it out, I used it. Nothing for the speaker when I was done. Um, there's nothing for any anything else, really. Uh, so you don't, you don't have enough wire. So hopefully you've got some wire on hand. Of course I did, so that wasn't a problem. Yeah, see, if we look right here, see the holes to mount, but the kit gives you no screws for that. So that's on you. Um, so I would not call this kit a complete kit by any means. This is more of a here you go, good luck kind of thing. And, and that's, that's common for these Chinese little kits, as you know. We've seen that in others. So this is a trash can material, so that's where it's going. And moving on, I'm going to have wire for, oh, another thing. While we're in the market of talking about what they don't give you enough of, you're supposed to wind 15 turns on this and then five turns for L1 and L2. And that doesn't even include the antenna cold. It takes 15 and five, so that's 20. Now, this is loosely wrapped. I, I understand that. But if you count this, I don't think there's enough wire on here to build these coals. I think you're going to get one. So I'm probably going to have to pull out some of my own wire. And of course, the problem there is you need to try to make it the right same size. So hopefully I've got something real close. Otherwise, your inductance is going to be different. So this is our next big project we're going to be doing coming up right here is this thing. So I guess it's probably time to go ahead and do that. So let me get set up. I'll come back when I've got everything laid out and ready. I'm going to move this kind of out of the way. We're going to try to build this coal. And uh, this is going to be kind of learn as we go, just like the rest of this kit. So see you in a minute. Okay, turns out I do have some wire. So we'll be okay if we don't have enough. And what I've done is I went ahead and put a little drill bit on my drill. And I drilled two holes in my pipe. I've stuck the wire through and I've looped it back out. And that's going to hold my, my wire so I can start wrapping this nice and tight pulling it. Because this wire is, you know, they had it cold up. It's all wrinkled. So we're going to pull it and try to get it nice. So I'm going to start wrapping this. But one of the things is this is not just a 15, um, L1 is not just 15 turns. According to the plans here, it's 15 total turns, but there's a tap at 12 turns and at 8 turns. So because of that, I need to take those into consideration. And I'll show you how I'm going to handle those when we get there. Let me, let me get the first 8 turns wrapped on this thing, and, and I'll be back. Okay, here's where we are. I didn't stop at 8 or at the 12 tap because my hands were just too full to really do much and be able to show much. I've got my wraps on here and I'm up on my 15th one here. And if you can see what I've done is I figured out what the 15 is. I've backed off this roll and I've marked with the pin where I'm going to drill to put him through and then back out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to unroll some of this because I do not want the drill bit to tear up the lacquer off my wire. That would be bad. So give myself some room and then I'm going to drill my, drill my hole right there where that mark's at. So give me just a second to get that drill. This way I don't have to worry about the drill hit tearing up the enamel off my wire, causing a short. So now 
now that I've got that hole, I'm going to go ahead and make another hole. Come back up through. Out there. Okay, now let's get back to our 15. I get all this plastic off me. Get back to our 15 windings. Now, that's 12. This is this tap is 12, so this is 13, 14, 15. Oh my god, that's kind of bunching up on me there. It's not easy to do this well. Look off some. Try to get back where I can tighten her up again. Pulling tight, and I'm trying to keep everything pushed up and not overdoing it. Thirteen. Fourteen. This will be 15 right here. So I figure out about what I need. To go through and come out with enough wire to work. Uh, and I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. Get that back through that hole, but i got to come up with a way to do it. So, that's probably going to take a challenge. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out a pair of forceps. And I'm going to see if I can do this. I'm going to do a little surgery. This is probably where my time in working in surgery will come in handy. a whole nother story. might have to come back instead of wasting all this time but I'm going to thread this through and we'll get it through there I did I got her sticking through so I can get enough to pull some be back okay so here we are I wonder why I taped this up I went ahead and got my wire through and back out the second hole and pulled everything tight and I want to get these things held solid where they don't move around and change on me while we're while we're you know working with the radio that'll change the tuning and so what I've done is I've kind of got it where I like it and I've taped around the the two end holes and pushed everything together nice and tight and everything. And I broke out the Q-dope and our homemade Q-dope. And I'm going to Q-dope up a little bit. And this should do the trick without changing the The characteristics of the winding. 
And the other benefit this is going to do for me is we have to wipe an in, or wipe, we have to wind an antenna coil around this at one point. And I want to make sure that we don't short, scratch my varnish and short the two coals. So this is going to help with that because it's an extra layer of protection from rubbing on the windings. Get a good coat of that on there. It won't take long to set up. And we'll give that a few minutes to set up. And I'll be back. And we will move right along. I don't think I'm going to get five windings and some leads sticking out, but I might. We'll see. If I was shorter with these, you might have done it, but I need to make sure I have plenty of room. So if we need to use the green, we'll use the green. One thing about it, we'll be able to tell which, which, uh, which one of our coals is which. So, all right, give me a few minutes. I'll be back. Okay, I got that done. <clears throat> Let it dry. Pull the tape off, put a little, little bit more around the edges. So this thing is glued solid. As you can, I can't move anything. It's solid. So that's just what we wanted. So now this will be ground. This will be 8, 12, and your 15. So that's, that's that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move up just a little bit. I'm going to go this side. I'm going to move up just a little bit. I'm going to drill a hole. And I'm going to do our five turn L2. Let's see, is it L2? Yeah, L2 is five turns. No taps on that one. So it'll just be a repeat of what I just did. It's going to be pretty straightforward. So I'll go ahead and uh, knock that out for you. And we will uh, we'll go from there. Now, I mentioned when I pulled this down, I mentioned the Q-Dope. And I mentioned the homemade Q-Dope we made. This, uh, I forget that some of my viewers maybe haven't seen earlier videos. In an earlier video called Making Homemade Q-Dope, I bought this and it was bad. It turned out it had been sitting around. It turned black. It was, it was horrible. So I decided to make my own. So I went through the whole process and showed you how to make Q-Dope. Q-Dope, for those that didn't see that video, is a polystyrene in a solvent that you paint on coals and it hardens into polystyrene plastic, just like you see here. And it protects the coal, but it glues the coal to keep the coal from moving around. So when you have a component, like an inductor, that you don't want the windings moving around and changing on you, you use Q-Dope. And the reason you use Q-Dope is because most other chemicals and stuff you put on here is going to affect impedance of your coal. Where Q-Dope polystyrene turns out doesn't have almost any effect at all. It's uh, You can't even measure it. It makes a great glue if you will to glue your coals down with so makes things stable so anyway if you want to see that i put it in that bottle there but here we made it in a mason jar eh, it's kind of thick you'll see it slowly moves around and you paint it on the solvent evaporates it's really quick it only takes you know i painted this on the first coat i painted on and it was only like a minute or two before i pulled the tape off i mean it's that quick so that's the other nice part about it so i'll go ahead and get the rest of the winding on this coal and like I mentioned, one of the benefits of doing this also is I'm going to wrap this with another coal for my antenna. And so that'll protect the two from rubbing on each other and shorting. So I'll be back in a minute when I get that coal made up. Um, I might make another coal on it too. Uh, I'm thinking about adding another coal. One for the antenna, of course, but one for a frequency pickup. I may try to use my frequency meter that we just played around with in the last couple videos. And uh, see if I could put a frequency meter on this thing. Might be a neat way to do it. I may just hold off and manually wrap it and try it. Uh, we'll see. I'll be back. I went ahead and finished up the coal. What you got here is you've got your five windings. <clears throat> went ahead and did the same thing. You uh, had to use green because this was not, there was no way I could do it with this piece of wire. It was not going to happen. So went ahead and used some of the green. So what you have now is, this is our five turns. So our five turn runs from here to here. Then we have the one we did originally, the 15 turns from here to here with the two taps. And then what you see here is 
green is three wraps around this coal with green. And what that is, is that's our antenna tap. You put some wraps around here for your antenna and hook it up. And that's your, that's your antenna tap. This is where our antenna is going to hook up. So the green here and green here is antenna. Your 15 turns with your taps, your five turns. I may add one more set around here for a frequency pickup. We'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, might be interesting to try to put a frequency meter on it. Maybe not. We'll see. Anyway, I brushed everything once I got the other coals done with Q-Dope. I'm letting it dry. It's, eh, it's kind of messy. It gets on you. But the nice thing is once it dries, it peels off. It's just plastic is all it is. So give it a little bit of time to dry. And we'll be ready to move on with the project. So I'll be back after I give it a little bit to dry and we'll pick up. All right, we're back and let that set up. I opened up the hardware and started looking through the hardware here and I actually found a screw for this. This is the screw they gave me. There is no way that screw could possibly go through this acrylic and screw into that. It doesn't even hardly make it through the acrylic. And they only gave me one. There's not another one of those in the hardware. The hard, you can't, I mean, they don't even give you what you need. I went into my hardware box and come up with some, they're M2.5 millimeters by eight millimeters, what I've got here. Those will be just right. So those are gonna work. So we've got that problem resolved. I was, did that while I was waiting on the coal to set up. The other thing I did is went ahead and snapped the batteries in, got the meter out, ready to test for primary voltages, make sure things look good and voltages where they're supposed to be. So I got set up for that, waited for you guys so I could let you check out this part. So here's what I've got. I went ahead and snapped the batteries in, switches are off. So I'm going to go ahead and check, make sure you can see this meter good. Okay. And let's make sure we've got our 1.5 from this battery going in the board. 1.6, that looks good. How about our 9 volt battery? 9.6, that looks good. So I'm going to go back to the ground on the 9 volt. And I'm not sure which one of these would be it, but one of these should have 9 volts on it. That one does. Oh, right off the bat, make sure this one doesn't also. No, it's got 1.6. So we've got our voltages to our switches. That's important. And we shouldn't have anything going through them. Unless I screwed up. Nothing there, but something here. I must have had a capacitor charged up or something. Huh, interesting. Nothing here. Nothing here. Flip on a switch. Should have something here now. Yeah, there's our nine volt. Put this one on. Should have one and a half here then. 1.6. Okay, great. Now look in our schematic. Let's see if I can get that over where you can see. Look at our schematic. Let's start with this tube over here. It looks like our 1.5 volt goes into pin one and seven. And let's see, where's our ground for this rascal? Right here is five so if i put one two three four five i put this on five that should be ground i should have 1.6 volts on pin one i do on pin seven i do okay let's go ahead and check 1.5 over here 1.5 should go in seven on the middle tube and my ground is three and one so no, that's seven. I'm sorry. Should go into seven. So seven. Switch my probes around here. Seven should have one and a half, one point six, and my ground should be three. It is, and it should also be one. It is okay. So moving along, next two one point five should go in one and seven, and my ground should be five. So five. So one should have 1.6 and seven should have 1.6 and it does. Okay, let's go to our nine volts. Nine volt should be coming in on four on this tube up here. And my ground should be uh, five. So five and four. And yes, I do have that. Okay, the next tube over. My nine volt should be coming in on four here. My ground should be on three and one. So it should be here. 
and it should be reduced because there is a resistor. N1. Yep, that makes sense. Last two, my 9 should be coming in on 4 here, and my ground should be 5 here, and it is. Okay. I'm happy with that test. So sanity test checks out. We've got voltages on the tubes where we should. Everything seems okay so far. So let me think about our next step, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, here's what I decided to do. I'm going to go ahead and figure out one of these capacitors up here has got to be this capacitor right here. And it feeds the audio into this stage of the amp. So I want to find where that's at. So I'm going to go from pin 3 and see if it's this one. That's that one. Okay, so I need to go from there to feed audio in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a capacitor to put in my signal generator to protect it from any DC. We're going to, I went ahead and soldered a little wire onto a ground here, and I'm going to inject audio. We're going to put the tube in, and we're going to see if we can hear any audio coming out of this thing. And that'll tell us whether that second stage of audio amplification is working. So that'll be uh, just a second. Let me get everything, and I'll be back. Okay, so I got me a little capacitor hooked up on my signal generator probe. I went ahead and hooked it to ground. We need to pop the tube in this rascal, which I pulled the right one out. Let's go ahead and get him in. Now, let's uh, turn power on. Both powers are on. Let me start output. I'm doing 700 hertz at minus 20 dBm. That might be a little low. Let's see if we can hear anything. Let's see, where's the volume? Volume about middle. Let's turn the amplitude up. I'm hearing something. Turn it up some more. All right, we're getting audio out of that stage. I'm gonna say that stage is working. Okay, that test is complete. Now, our next test is going to be to get the next stage done. Now, this next one uses a different tube. It uses a 1B These pins are bent. They bent these pins up something fierce on this thing. Didn't plug in, is it? Ooh, no, no, no. I'm going to have to do a little pin straightening. Ugh. I don't like doing that. Oh, I'm not a fan of this. I like bending pins on glass tubes. But I don't know that I have much choice if I'm going to get it plugged in. Let's see, well, can I get it plugged in now? Yep, I'm getting her. All right. Now, got that plugged in. I need to take it back out. And I got to figure out where the signal gets into this one. And it comes from the volume from the middle pin to 6. Or so it says. Let's see here. So from the middle pin here 
we should be making it on six. We are, okay. So I should be able to jack in here to the tube. And then inject my signal there. And that tube's in. Power back on. Hook this back up. Up the ground over here. Okay, hook her up here. Um, and it should be much louder. Helps if I turn it on. Definitely hearing it. I don't forget volume isn't going to work because I'm sit, sending it directly in. I don't know that it seemed a lot louder. Let's see. Interesting. doesn't seem louder. I would have expected with two stages of amplification we'd hear it a lot louder. So I don't But I would think if this tube was shot, you wouldn't get any audio through it. Hmm. Okay. Turn the signal up a little bit. Hmm. I don't know. Does not seem like it is that much louder on that with two stages. So I question that. I just, you know, flashing that too when I turn that off. I question that. So that'll be one thing to question. So I could try this, turn it back on. I could. Turn the frequency up some. Volume does seem to be having an effect. Okay, well, let's do this. The volume comes in. Here, I believe. I can't control the volume there. Okay. So it's we're getting audio through anyway. So that's stage one. So all right, I'm going to say that successful test there. Two stages of amplification working. Now, the next thing is going to be got to hook up the coal, and uh, I'll work on that and come back, and uh, we'll talk about what we did. And uh, get this out of your face. We'll talk about what I did, how I did it, and we'll go from there. So be back. So let's take a look at what I've done. Went ahead and... Finished this up, used my clippings. Um, what do they actually call these things? Wire stripping tweezers, okay? These are for enameled wire, scrapes the enamel off. So I went ahead and cleaned the ends, trimmed these off, cleaned the ends with the clippings, soldered wires, color coded, and went ahead and shrink wrapped since I've got bare area here with no enamel. And so now what I got to do is I've got to figure out the layout on the board, where it's going to mount. 
and then <coughs> excuse me and then once we figure out where we're putting it I can start trimming these off the proper length for hookup so as far as I'm concerned the coal is done it's ready to go on so we're really ready to start mounting this stuff up we're ready to mount all this up on the board I'm gonna go ahead and take the tubes out again and then we got to kind of lay out figure out what we're doing on this board I kind of want to get this as far over as I possibly can to this edge and mount it down because that'll give me room to get this in here get this in speaker will come over here get this in like this it's my plan and then this can go right here that's my plan so I'm gonna try to make that happen so I will go ahead and work on that I'm not sure how they expect you to screw this into the wood, but that's standoffs for the boards. So I guess what I'll do is drill a hole small enough for this, put some epoxy and put them down. That's gonna be the best way to do it I can think of. I'll epoxy this down, probably something like that. You can see what I'm doing. About like that. And should be able to maybe get this bolted down in here. Okay. Something like this. And the 9 volt battery is just going to have to I'm not sure. I'll try to figure something out. Hmm. Maybe if I move this down just a little I can put this battery mount it somewhere somehow or another over like this maybe some double side sticky tape or something anyway let me work on it I'll figure it out I'll come back and show you what I've done we'll see how we're making out okay so anyway I'm working on mounting stuff I've got the two transformers screwed in and I'm putting the standoffs on and just this is the screws they give you to put in the standoff is there any reason you need 200 threads to hold a circuit board on it's ridiculous so what I did is because the thread, the bolts are so long, takes so long to get in. Uh, I went and got one of our little things out that we we bought and evaluated, like your screwdriver. Save a bunch of time. I mean, it's ridiculous how much you could have used a, a bolt machine thread through a tent this long and then more than you need. I mean, that's just ridiculous. So what I've done is, let me get over here, make sure you can see. I drilled a couple holes and screwed these transformers down as tight over and up as I can to get circuit board just in here. I drilled these so that the little threaded part will sit in the hole down here. Hopefully they line up because I did my best to get it all lined up. They do. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some epoxy down in this hole, mix up a little epoxy, put it down in there, set this down, set some of this weight on top of it, let it set. I'm going to have to wait a little bit for that to set up. It's going to probably take an hour to get to where I can safely mess around without worrying about it. I'll do that. I'll come back and we'll just keep trucking along. I'll go ahead and glue that in. I think I'm going to set this down and before I glue it, I think I'm going to go ahead and set this battery some of this stuff out of my way. I'm going to set this battery for this D cell up here and go ahead and pull the battery out. Go ahead and get the K screw down for that because that's going right here. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'll go ahead and do that. Just drill a little hole, put one of the short little screws through to hold the battery case, put some epoxy on this and put it down. And then, uh, yeah, we'll give it an hour to dry and I'll be back and we'll just keep moving along. See you in a little bit. Epoxy dried. I went ahead and 
boards mounted, as you know, I had to move these transformers. They were going to be a problem. Ended up building it backwards because as I went, I realized that the way that I'd put this board in, the speaker and stuff wasn't going to have room. So I kind of turned things around a little on my own here and kind of built it a little different. But uh, I think it's going to work out just fine. Got the speaker mounted, got the controls mounted, ohmed out this switch for the bands, marked them. So I know what contacts are what. I've got to get that wired to the coal. But I backed myself in a corner. I don't have anywhere for the coal to go. So I'm, I'm having to evaluate exactly what I'm going to do. Got a couple different thoughts with it. One is to take this off, put the coal here. It's probably what I'm going to do. So the battery will be loose with this battery. Look into adding a place to put this. Not quite sure yet. Probably going to take this off, put the coal here. I think it's what I'm going to do. And then I'll worry about what I'm going to do with the battery stuff, you know, a little later. Didn't give you enough parts as usual. I didn't have enough screws to belt this down, so I went into my hardware and found some. So you might be able to see down here, there's one black screw and there's one silver screw. They gave me this one. They didn't give me one for this one. So, so we're coming along. It's, uh, it's not, you know, it's these Chinese kits are just not complete. They don't give you instructions. They don't give you all the parts. I'm not going to put these posts on for the antenna because I don't use any antennas with that kind of connections. I'm going to work up a way to put a probably an SMA connector on here. So that's going to be what I'll use for an antenna because other, my other stuff has that or at least I can adapt from my other stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Give me a little time to figure out exactly what to do here. I'm gonna mount this down. I've got to wire these up to the switch and solder, solder them in. And we're pretty much, once I get this switch wired up to the coal and the coal wired to the board, we're pretty much done. We're ready to see if it'll pick up anything. So I'll try to use my signal generator to see if I can get it to pick up anything in the in the office here so i'll be back in a little while okay one thing i forgot to say in the last little clip i put the variable capacitor on let me try to get it in here where you can see they give you no instructions on this thing i i fired up the lcr meter set it for capacitance started checking and they're calling for um 270. I can't find 270 on this thing. I was able to get 160 is the highest I could get. And that's, if you can see, let me get up here. If you can see, right, those two, those two connections there are the only ones that I could get a reasonable level on. And there's really no good marking for me to tell you wh which one that is actually. Without a, a way to check capacitance, it's going to be kind of hard. Um, it looks like looks like it might say NCI on this one right on this one right here. So it would be the middle and NCI. That's the best I can do for you. Um, just not not a well done kit for somebody that you know without the right tools and extra screws and some extra wire and things like that this would be kind of a difficult for a beginner to build truthfully so it'd be interesting to see how well it works but it's I, I wouldn't call this a beginner's kit so i'll be back all right so i think we're ready to test i've got the coal mounted i epoxy the coal Back here, remove the battery box. I'll figure out what to do with these batteries. I don't know at the moment, but I'll figure it out. All right, the antenna's hooked up to a BNC with an adapter up here. I got the switch. Let's see if I can get a good view of it. I got the switch in down here, and it's wired up to the coals, and all that's wired up to the board. I had to, I had to do some tracing to figure out. You know, when you look at the schematic, <clears throat> when you look at the schematic, you know, it shows you where the windings go here. But when you look at the board, the board just has L1 and L2. It doesn't mark which one is your negative side of your coal, the bottom of your coal. 
you know, the side here that would go, for example, on L1 would go to ground right here. And up here, you go to ground through a pot. Okay, now which, which one of those? Okay, well, it says one, two, three, four. There is no one, two, three, four. And I thought, well, it's just in the order it goes. One and the next one, the next one, the next one. Nope. Not only that, to top everything off, when you start tracing it down, you find out that the L1 section here, the L1 where the wires hook for the L1 is marked on the silk screen, L1 is not L1, that's L2. L2 is L1. They're reversed. So what I figured out was the middle two are grounds. Remember to reverse them. L2, the tickler coil, goes to L1. L1, the main coil, goes to L2 with the ground sides in the middle. That's what in what happens. Okay, so what you have is your tickler coil comes in and hooks the positive side here, the negative side here, then, or not negative ground, but then what I have is the the ground side of the coal for the main coal goes to L2 in the, this pin here. And then this connection goes over to the middle of the switch, the common of the switch. And then your taps connect to the first three pins so that you can switch the taps. So that's how it works. So what I've done is I went ahead and hooked up to my signal generator. I've got my signal generator set to 7 megahertz, minus 40 dB, should be a pretty strong signal, um, with AM modulation at 100% at 500 hertz. So that's what we're looking for. So I'm ready to turn it on and see if I can find anything. So I've got this turned all the way down. I'm on the bottom coal, which should put me in the seven. The regions in the middle, the volume, I'm going to turn it wide open. If it's too loud, I'm sorry, I'll turn it right down, but I don't want to miss a signal because it's quiet. And so I'm going to turn it on. And I hear nothing. So play with the regen. I don't hear anything from the region at all, like any oscillations or whatever. All right, so I'm going to start tuning. I'm hearing something. Get over here where the mic's close. Okay, so that's somewhere around there. We must be 7 megahertz, but it's not very loud. That's wide open. And I can't get it to oscillate. The region's not acting like it's doing anything. Okay. Well, let me bump the signal up here. Okay, there's 30, so uh, I can hear it pretty good now, but man, I'm pumping a big signal in. Yeah, you can hear it way... You can hear it as a tune over a big area because I'm pumping a lot of signal in. Somewhere in there must be 7. The volume does work. Region don't seem to do anything. And I'm not getting the amplification I would expect. You know, I'm back. I, I think this is a problem. I, I think we need more voltage than this would be my guess. Because I, I should be able to get this tube to oscillate. And I can't get anything. So I think... I mean, and it's obviously receiving something. I mean, it's obviously receiving this. Let me change the AM frequency. See if we can hear. Oh, yeah. It's definitely my signal. There's a thousand hertz. All right. I'm going to go ahead and add another battery in series. So let, let me bow out off camera. I'll go ahead and add another 9 volt. Dig up a battery clip. Slap it on. We'll try another 9 volt. See how that does. If it does better but we don't like it, I'll add a third one if I need to. That'll get us 
you know, over the 22 and a half we're asking for on this. This one's asking for 22 and a half volts here. This one in the board says uh, 18 to 90. So we'll try 18 volts. All right. <clears throat> so I went ahead and since I had to change the clips with one of mine, I like mine a lot better. They snap on easier. So I went ahead and changed both of them to match because it would drive me crazy anyway, having two separate looking ones. So anyway, we've got 18 volts going into this thing now. And uh, let me verify exactly what the voltage is. You know, should be 18 volts anyway. I mean, if it's not 18 volts, I don't, or darn close to it, I don't know what it's, where, where it would be getting something different, but. Nineteen point one six. Okay, so we have boosted the voltage quite a bit. Nothing's changed. Settings are all the same. Everything's the same. Same here. So we should be able to turn it on. Yep. Seems a little louder. Regen control still doesn't seem to do anything. I, I thought I'd be able to turn it up and have it oscillate. Okay, changing the coal definitely changes off the frequency. Okay, with those. Only on the main one can I get seven megahertz. So let's turn the signal down a bunch. Not quieter. Minus 50 dB, I'm not picking anything up. I would have thought it had been more sensitive than that. Minus 49. I can just hear it at minus 49. Here, I'm going to put, take the mic off, put it up there. Hopefully you can hear it. That's minus 49 dB M at minus 50. I guess I can hear it. Five, six, fifty-four, fifty-three, two, fifty-one, fifty, minus forty-nine, forty-eight, seventy-six, five, forty-four, forty-three, forty-two, forty-one, forty, minus forty dBm, minus thirty-nine dBm, thirty-eight, thirty-seven, thirty-six, five, four, three, two, one, minus thirty dBm. So, well, I mean, it's receiving. I don't know if it's receiving right or not, but I think we're going to have to end the video here. Um, I'm tired. It's getting late. Uh, it's been a lot of fun getting to this point, but at least we have it somewhat working. I'll do some playing around with it, and uh, I'll look things over, make sure things look right, see if I can find anything wrong, and I'll have to get it hooked to an antenna and try it. So that'll be the next video. We'll... I'll let you know if I found anything, what's going on. We'll hook it up. We'll try it. We'll try to get the thing to work off the pick up a signal off the air. And that'll be it. This will get set aside for the big shootout with all the radios. Uh, I've got another kit we'll be building. 
another shortwave radio. It's another regen, but it's a transistorized regen. I've got another kit we're probably going to build. We're probably going to build our own own actual superheterodyne receiver too, put in the shootout. So the shootout is going to be quite a couple radios, and we're really going to look at comparing one to the other to the other. So it's not just, oh, this doesn't work well. Oh, no, I think it works great. No, it's going to be, you know, compare this to this, to this, to this, to this. Which radio do you like? And we'll see how it comes out. Thanks for hanging out with me on this one. And if you haven't subscribed, do me a favor. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It helps me out. If you like the video, hit, hit the like. That helps me out. The algorithm puts me out to more people. And if you want to be notified every time I put a video out, hit the little bell. Catch you in the next one.